Hi, my name is Ed Zucchero, and this is my first problem solving class for the spring. And I start out every class with a real math story that shows how important math is in the real world. And today's story is about the Harrisburg Middle School in Pennsylvania trying to set a Guinness World Record. And this is a true story, it happened in 1978. You can Google it. They got the whole school involved and uh, lined up hundreds and hundreds of students on each side of the rope. And what I'm saying is that math teachers should have stopped the contest. Because sometimes we should think about math, but we do not. It was obvious nobody did the proper calculation. So some things are dangerous if you don't do the math correctly, and they're obviously dangerous if you don't do the math at all. So there were 1,100 students on each side of the rope. The rope was tested to withstand 13,000 pounds of force. What is the concern? So of course you have to figure out how much each student can pull, and it's a it's a, a varied amount depending on uh, the size of the student. But just to be safe, you should figure at least 50 pounds pull. And to be very safe, it would be 100 pounds of pull. So the rope test should have been somewhere between 55,000 and 110,000 pounds. But it was only 13,000 pounds of force. And it was not surprising that the rope broke. There were serious injuries. Nobody died, but some very, very serious injuries, all because uh, the math wasn't done. In this session, there'll be one math joke that's not very funny. The main part of the session is teaching a very powerful problem-solving method that will make difficult problems seem easy. You'll be challenged. You'll get the opportunity to try to solve the most difficult SAT math problem on a recent SAT test, and using this problem-solving technique makes it pretty easy. This one problem, 92% of high school students did not know how to do. So let's take a look at the problem-solving technique and the problem. The problem was rated most difficult on a recent SAT test. Again, 92% of high school juniors and seniors did not know how to do the problem. And it really should have been a fairly easy problem for a fourth grade student. So here's the problem. Joseph can paint N cars in T hours. How long does it take Joseph to paint one car? Of course, the reason the problem is difficult is there's variables in the problem. There's no numbers. And most people cannot think in variables. Most people can't think in fractions. They can't think in decimals. So variables especially make the problem difficult. So here's the problem solving technique that makes the problem pretty easy. It's called the 210 method or the 10 2 method. And what that says is instead of the variables, plug in a 2 and a 10 or a 10 and a 2, whatever makes the problem easier. So let's try that with this problem. Let's plug a 2 and a 10 in. Joseph can paint n cars in t hours. How long does it take Joseph to paint one car? Plugging the 2 and the 10 in, Joseph can paint two cars in 10 hours. How long does it take Joseph to paint one car? That's pretty obvious. 10 hours for two cars, so one car is 10 divided by 2 is 5. So now let's go back to the problem. We know how to do the problem. We take the 10 and divide it by 2. So let's go back to the problem. T divided by N. So the 2 and the 10 showed us how to do it. And we do the exact same thing to the variables. So T divided by N is T over N. Let's try another one. How many three-quarter pound pieces can be cut from a giant 1,200 pound meatball? Now, when I used to teach, a lot of my students would say the answer to that was 900. 
And they said if it was anything else, they did not know how to do it because it came out very even. Three quarters of 1,200 is 900, but obviously it can't be 900 because if you have three quarter pound pieces, it has to be a larger number than 1,200. So let's do the 210 method. How many three quarter pound pieces can be cut from a giant 1,200 pound meatball? Plug a two and a 10 in. How many two pound pieces can be cut from a giant 10 pound meatball? That's pretty obvious. 10 divided by 2, 5 pieces. Go back to the problem, do the exact same thing. 1,200 divided by 3 quarters, and you come up with 1,600. Here's another one. There's, this actually is a very easy problem, except a lot of students struggle with it because it has a decimal and a variable in it. So as your brain's trying to figure out how to do it, the variables and the decimals throw you. So let's put a 2 and a 10 in and see if the brain can think. If a car is traveling at a speed of 2 miles per hour, how many hours will it take for the car to travel 10 miles? That's pretty obvious. 2 miles each hour, and you want to go 10 miles, so 10 divided by 2 is 5. Let's go back to the problem and do the exact same thing. Instead of 10 divided by 2, we go n divided by 55.8. Hey, here's your math joke. Grandpa, will you help me with this problem? Oh, fractions. Sorry, I'm no good with fractions. I'm not ashamed to admit it either. In fact, they say five out of four people have trouble with fractions. Now, Sometimes I'll give this to a room full of uh, people who I'm speaking to, and there'll be dead silence. And I either, I figure it's one of two things. They either have no sense of humor or, um, well, I don't even want to think of the other reason they wouldn't laugh. Well, let's do one more problem together, then I'll give you some to try on your own. And the ones I'm going to give you are level one, which are fairly easy, level two, which are a little more difficult, then I'll give you an Einstein problem, which is very difficult. So let's do one more, make sure we know how to do it. If the cost of each hat is X dollars, what is the cost of Y hats? A lot of people, when they see that problem, as soon as they see variables, their brain starts spinning, they can't figure out what to do. So let's put a two and a 10 in. If the cost of each hat is $2, what is the cost of 10 hats? Most people would say, oh, that's pretty, pretty easy. If they're $2 each and there's 10 hats, 10 times 2, $20. So let's go back to the problem. And you learned with the 2 and a 10 that you need to multiply. So if the cost of each hat is X dollars, what is the cost of Y hats? X times Y is XY dollars. Now I'm going to be going over several problem solving techniques. Uh, this is the first one and probably the most powerful one. In this book, there's 17 or 18 of them. I'll probably this spring do five or six of them. But if you like these, think you might, might want to do some more of them. Uh, they're in this book. It's called Becoming a Problem Solving Genius. All right, here are, you, here are your problems to try. Here's level one. Now what I would do, I would pause your clip here. Pause it, try to do them, and then when you're done with these three problems, then unpause your clip because I'm about to show you how to do them. So I'll give you a chance to pause it, and when you're done, unpause it, and I'll go through the solutions. So good luck. Well, here are your answers. I hope they weren't too hard. Plugging in a 2 and a 10 or a 10 and a 2. Arya bought 40 pizzas for a school party. If there are 320 people at the school, how much pizza would each person get? And I'm giving you a hint. I'm saying use 10-2 because it makes the brain work a lot easier than the 210. So we're going to put a 10 and a 2 in. Arya bought 10 pizzas for a school party. If there are two people at the school, how much pizza would each person get? So obviously 10 divided by 2, 5 pizzas each. So now you know the solution to the problem is pizzas divided by people. So let's go back to the problem. Are you about 40 pizzas for a school party if there are 320 people at our school? 
how much pizza would each person get? Remember we learned before, divide pizzas divided by people. So 40 divided by 320 equals one eighth pizza each. All right, let's go to the next one. There are Y horses and Z chickens in a barn. How many legs are there in the barn? There are two horses and 10 chickens in a barn, how many legs are there? So that's easy, two times four for the horses, 10 times two for the chickens, then you add them up. So let's go back to the problem. Instead of two times horses, it's y times the horses' legs. So it's y times four legs each, and then for the chickens, it's z times two legs each. So y times four, which is four y, and chickens 2z, so the answer is 4y plus 2z legs. Again, with a 2 and a 10, helps the thinking a little better. Let's go to number 3. If the price of cheese is $2.35 per pound, what is the cost of 2.45 pounds of cheese? Little difficult because of the decimals, but 2 and a 10 will clear it up easily. If the price of cheese is $2 per pound, what is the cost of 10 pounds? Obviously, 10 times 2. All right, so we know we multiply, go back to the problem and just multiply. Your answer is $5.76. All right, we're gonna go on to level two problems. Again, you might wanna pause the clip and uh, take your time to do the problems. Number four is a little tricky and uh, with a two and a 10 or a 10 and a two in the in each one of these problems, they should be fairly easy to figure out how to do. So again, pause the clip, do the problems. I'll be back in a little while and show you how to do them. Okay, here are the answers to level two. If it takes six hours to paint five-sevenths of a truck, how long will it take to paint the whole truck? That's Plug in a 10 and a 2 this time. It makes it a lot easier. If it takes 10 hours to paint two trucks, how long will it take to paint one whole truck? Pretty easy. 10 hours for two trucks. 10 divided by 2 is 5 hours for a whole truck. So we know the way to do this problem is the hours divided by the trucks. So let's go to the problem. 6 hours. 5 sevenths of a truck, so it's 6 divided by 5 sevenths. Or, if you remember how to do uh, division problems, you flip the fraction over, multiply 6 times 7 fifths equals 8 and 2 fifths hours. And each fifth of an hour is 12 minutes, 60 minutes divided by 5, 12 minutes, so 8 hours and 24 minutes. Question five, if a car is traveling at a speed of 60 miles per hour, how many hours will it take for the car to travel n miles? Again, that uh, variable throws you off a little bit. Let's put a two and a 10 in. A car is traveling at a speed of two miles each hour. How long will it take for the car to travel 10 miles? 10 divided by two, five hours. So now we know we divide miles by miles per hour. So it would be n divided by 60, n over 60. Number six, the sound of a thunderstorm travels approximately one-fifth of a mile in one second. And that's actually a true scientific fact. It takes sound about five seconds to go one mile. So um, in one second, it goes one-fifth of a mile. Now it takes five seconds to go one mile, so in one second it goes one-fifth of a mile. How far will sound travel in 18.6 seconds? Fractions and decimals mess up your thinking a little bit, so let's put a 2 and a 10 in. The sound from a thunderstorm travels approximately two miles in one second. How far will sound travel in 10 seconds? So that's fairly easy to find. Two miles each second in 10 seconds, two times 10. It's 20 miles. Let's go back to the problem. Now that we know we multiply, so very easy. One fifth times 18.6 equals 3.72 miles. 
Now, I am going to give you an Einstein level problem. You'll have to be creative with 210 or 102 method to solve this problem. When you read it, it sounds very confusing, but just plug a 2 and a 10 in, or a 10 and a 2, whatever you find uh, works better. And it, it'll be difficult, but I think it's very doable. And again, um, after I show you the problem, put your clip on pause. And when you're done, start it up again. I'll show you how to do it. A spacecraft with a volume of 800 cubic feet is leaking air at a rate of 0.4 cubic feet every n minutes. How many minutes until the spacecraft has no air? Sounds almost impossible with decimals, three things in there, with a variable. But put, use the 210 or the 102 method and see how you do. And when you're done, start up again, and I'll show you how I did it. Here is the answer. So there's your problem. Let's plug a 10 and a 2 in. A spacecraft with a volume of 800 cubic feet is leaking air at a rate of 10 cubic feet every two minutes. How many minutes until the spacecraft has no air? So 800 cubic feet is leaking at a rate of 10 cubic feet every two minutes. So let's see how many 10 cubic feet groups are in the 800 cubic feet. Of course, we'd have to divide the 800 by 10. So there's 80 groups of 10 cubic feet, and that's every two minutes. So it would be 80 times 2, um, 160 minutes. Now do the same thing with the original problem. All right, there's the problem. In the one we plugged the 10 and the 2, let's review what we did. We did 80 or 800 cubic feet divided by 10 cubic feet and found out that was 80 groups of 10 cubic feet times 2 minutes. So we'll do the same thing. Instead of 80 divided, 800 divided by 10, we're going to go back up to the problem. 800 divided by 0.4 times n minutes. So 800 divided by 0.4 is 2,000 and then times n minutes. So the answer is 2,000 n minutes. 2,000 n minutes. Let's go back and do that one more time. Just make sure you uh, get it. So here's the original problem up here. Then here's where we plugged a 2 and a 10 and we want to see how many groups of 10 cubic feet are in 800. So 800 divided by 10, 800 cubic feet divided by 10 times 2 minutes. So we go back to the problem 800 divided by 0.4 cubic feet. So we're going to see how many groups of 0.4 cubic feet are in this 800. So 800 cubic feet divided by 0.4 times n minutes. We do that out and it's 200 times n minutes. The answer is 2,000 n minutes. And if you get this, uh, give yourself an Einstein award and write your name down. All through my lessons I'll be giving Einstein level awards. I had some of my students over the years I uh, ended up with hundreds of Einstein awards. I think they put them on a bulletin board at home. If you would like to look at books I've written, please go to www.challengemath.com or they can be purchased on Amazon. Thank you for watching. Look for additional classes this spring and summer. I'm in quarantine with my wife, so I, instead of traveling the country speaking at conferences, I'm going to try uh, doing a few classes, see if there's any interest in them. If, if there is interest, I will continue doing them. So look for my next class. I will be posting it sometime next week. Again, thank you for watching.